Hello and welcome to another episode of Surfish A Lot. In this episode, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. It's a sort of a, it's a project, it's a build. I'm building a lamp out of an old boat motor. The boat motor I have been basically searching for for three years. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, it's uh, a retro sort of design and uh, All I'm doing here is cutting the basis of the rock. This isn't really a DIY video. Uh, it's more of a, just a showing of how I made the project. It maybe can inspire you if you're interested in doing the same thing. Um, the boat motor itself, uh, a Johnson Seahorse, five and a half horsepower. I just love the look of it, the lines and everything on it. Um, the part of the waiting process was finding something that was at a good price range. So the motor itself, the person who sold it to me, sold it to me as a non-working motor. And I found out part of the reason why maybe it was not working was because the impeller that uh, sucks in the water from the body of water that you're on into the motor for cooling uh, wasn't uh, in the best of shape. The uh, bottom leg is the component that I'm going to be using with the prop and then the cowling and then I'm going to put those pieces together and then hold them up inside the rock um, if uh, this is something you're interested in feel free to uh, put some comments down I'm always okay with trying to have a conversation about uh, how I did this um, so if you like the content, please uh, subscribe. I do do some building projects occasionally as I uh, get the time to do so. And uh, if uh, you're a returner, uh, thank you very much. It's been a while since I made a uh, video. I uh, did a lot of fishing on the Assiniboine River this winter. And uh, let's just say I didn't have very much success I guess uh, fishing for me is the definition of insanity. So the simple basic steps here, I'm just uh, disassembling, disassembling the uh, motor and uh, getting the components that I want to use for the lamp. And I will be cleaning them up and then uh, putting them all back together and then adding the uh, electrical components of the uh, lamp part. Now while I'm talking about the electrical components, I just want to put in a bit of a disclaimer here. I, uh, I'm not an electrician by any means. I just uh, can kind of navigate around the subject and do what I need to do in order to get the outcome that I want. So I can show you a little bit, but uh, as far as uh, being responsible or liable for uh, you potentially electrocuting yourself if you're doing this, just uh, be forewarned. So I've got the rock base here and I'm not completely enamored with the shape of it. So I'm just going to work it a little bit with some hammers here and shape it a little bit. It's a little bit heavy at the moment too, so I'm going to be downsizing it a little bit. And this particular piece of stone was quite uh, quite nice to work with. It was uh, a little bit older piece of rock. So as far as safety equipment goes, when you're working with stone, you should always be wearing glasses. I have glasses on all the time. I need it for my vision. But then uh, if you're working with uh, power tools, I always would recommend uh, using some sort of uh, ear protection. It's very loud and can damage your hearing. So be uh, aware of that if you choose to do something like this. The other option too that uh, I've seen that inspired me, uh, the individual who did this used a, uh, some kind of a heavy gear on the base. Uh, Ryan actually gave me the idea for embedding it into a stone and making it look like the skag hit a stone and you lost your bottom end. 
there's a lot of that that goes around around Kenora, so I thought the idea was fantastic and chose to uh, use his recommendation and suggestion, and it worked out very well. So thank you, Ryan, for that. Appreciate it. So the cement that I'm using here is just an anchoring cement. Uh, it's used for saddles uh, if you're doing something like a pergola on a patio. And I'm just uh, going to use some duct tape on the the slot that I've got uh, in there where this gag will sit and then use that to make a form and then uh, put the concrete in there and marry the two together the bottom leg and the stone and while I'm doing that I will level them off because I want the uh, the cowling to be as level as I can get it so that when you're looking at it uh, from a distance uh, it's uh, a peers level. So for the rich lean plate that's going to attach to the cowling, I wanted to do something kind of cool with it. Uh, I wanted to have a dial. Uh, so I used a dimmer switch, a radial dimmer switch on there and eventually what I'll do is I might get something 3D printed that looks a little more retro for the knob that's on the uh, dimmer switch but uh, just for now I wanted to kind of get the lamp basically finished off and functioning but uh, I thought it would be a cool idea to have the dimmer switch on for rich lean there and um, something that uh, was a bit challenging with that particular dimmer switch was uh, the manufacturer mislabeled some of the um, wires that were coming out of it. So it's it's uh, wired up for a three-way switch, but uh, I wasn't using it as a three-way switch, but uh, the wire that they had labeled for the three-way switch was actually mislabeled. It was the uh, neutral line, so. It took a little bit of playing around to figure out, but I did eventually do it, and I got it. So just, if whatever product you're using, just make sure you're looking at the label. This particular anchoring cement takes about 30 minutes to set up. So now that I've got it set up, I'm going to remove the duct tape that's holding it level. And then I'm going to attach the prop using a two-part epoxy. I'm using JB Weld. Uh, after working on Ryan's boat project, uh, we found out that JB Weld is absolutely fantastic with uh, marrying or gluing sort of uh, aluminum together. So I'm going to put uh, JB Weld on the prop and then attach it back in its spot. And then the rubber grommet that's on there, I'm going to JB Weld that on there as well. And I'm not gonna play around with this too much. I want this stuff to set up and uh, be secure. So I will put this on and leave it for uh, overnight. It takes about 12 hours to cure, depending on the product that you get. I prefer a slower curing product because usually I find that the bond is better and stronger in the long run. So the electrical components are pretty simple and straightforward. I wanna use two lights underneath the cowling and then have them controlled by the dimmer switch. The lights I've chosen are LED lights. I want the, the color of the lighting to be basically as white as possible. And then um, I'm going to attach the cowling to the bottom leg using a piece of PVC pipe that I'm going to cut to shape and it's going to slide. As you can see on that cowling, there's a lip around there. So I'm going to have some slots inside the PVC piping. The PVC pipe is going to slide to those slots. I'm going to attach the PVC piping to that lip using self-tapping screws. And then I'm going to attach it to the bottom leg where the leg used to attach to the motor, uh, the structure and holes that are there. So with the dimmer switch, I just follow the directions that were provided with it as far as making the circuit. The only thing I did was I made the circuit uh, extend so it doesn't go to a single light, the dimmer switch. It goes from 
the dimmer switch to one light to another light and then back to the dimmer switch. The lamp cord that I got, I think I'm going to get a modification for that one too. I'm going to add one that has an on-off switch because the dimmer switch itself does not have an on-off. As far as going from the dimmer switch to the lights themselves, I've chosen some uh, const house construction wire, some 110. And the reason why I've chosen to use this particular wire is because it, uh, it, it will structurally support itself but I didn't want any wires hanging out past the bottom of the cowl light going from the dimmer switch to the light sockets. Also fun fact working on the building project with Ryan for the ice fishing shock 110 that wire will carry five volts through it. We found that out tested it out. So you can use it for USB chargers and things like that as well with five volts. So again, I want to thank you all for watching the video. I know it's been a while since I put one out. Uh, I explained earlier, winter was pretty rough for me. Didn't have a great ice fishing season, so I didn't feel like I would burden you with that poor content. But uh, here it is. Here's the lamp. Here's how it looks. I'm quite pleased with how it turned out.